Welcome everybody to 2020 and for uh, for us, our first town hall of 2020. Um, my name is Chris Neto. I am a market development manager at Starin and I am happy to have uh, Mr. Mark Misspelli from Yamaha here, Yamaha here with me today. How are you, Mark? I'm great, Chris. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for coming and uh, kicking off our 2020 town hall series. Um, so this year, uh, what's going to be a little different is I will be hosting most of these town halls. Uh, I'll be bringing in various guests, same format that we've done in the past. Uh, we will be bringing in guests from both Starin and from people outside of uh, our industry. Uh, excuse me, not outside of our industry, but we'll bring in our vendors into the, t the town halls for you guys to, as the audience, to ask the tough questions that nobody else wants to. And I'm sure Mark just got surprised by me saying that. So welcome to the hot seat, Mr. Mispelli. Very good. Very good. It's great <laughs> to be here. So let's kick off this, uh, this town hall with a little bit of an introduction about who you are, what you guys do, and how can you help the Starin customer base that is on this call. Uh, sure. So thanks very much uh, again for having me. Um, when your team reached out with this opportunity to present, I was thrilled uh, and accepted gladly. Uh, my name is Mark Mispelli. I am the distribution sales manager for Yamaha UC. Uh, I've been with Yamaha for five years uh, and have seen many changes in that time, but the important relationship with Yamaha and Sarens remained unchanged. Uh, so Sarin and Yamaha, formerly Revo Labs, have been partners for more than a decade. Uh, Sarin's our primary distributor, bringing extensive expertise and knowledge to the U.S. AV and IT market. As many of you know, Yamaha purchased Revo Labs five or six years ago as a way into the American market. Uh, Revo Labs became Yamaha UC at Infocom 2018, and while we still honor and support our Revo Labs legacy products, all new products are branded Yamaha. Mark, are you, uh, you a little nervous? Uh, what makes you say that? You uh, seem to be a little nervous. Uh, loosen uh, up. There is a crowd of people here that want to ask questions. You seem a little tight. Uh, so, well. tell, me, tell me something about Yamaha. What makes Yamaha special? So what, what makes, makes it us, different? Yeah, what makes us special is our audio quality. Uh, Yamaha has been focused on audio for more than 100 years, actually in excess of 130 years. Uh, and it's really our focus and dedication to all things audio, be it uh, a keyboard, a piano, or, or guitars, drums, or, or speakers, uh, or UC products. Now you're speaking uh, to the heart uh, of the audience that's yeah. here because they, I guarantee you that you'll probably get a couple hand raises from former musicians that are sitting here and are very familiar with your products. Uh, so the Yamaha UC division is its own little separate little entity off to the side. Uh, you guys are specializing in obviously UC standing for Unified Communications. Um, started with the audio and you've gotten into other little areas. Tell us about your approach for unified communications as a, as a whole. So we've seen uh, the business go from standard phones to SIP phones and more and more it's becoming uh, a video communication and our UC products fit extremely well and are designed to work uh, agnostically with the Zooms, with the uh, blue jeans with the teams uh, Skype and all the other formats all the other uh, platforms uh, so uh, it, It's it's very rare that I'm making a standard phone call these days almost all of my communications are via zoom or Skype or teams yeah. uh, or Email yeah. so our, what, our products are designed to enhance the audio with that Yamaha audio quality built in yeah, what's great about your, your, your company and the products that you guys sell and, you know, and, and looking through your product lineup, you guys early on realized very quickly that it wasn't necessarily an integrated solution that was going to solve 90% of the problems. These huddle spaces that have become very popular uh, over the years have been very easy, very one-off, you know, let's just get something in the room. And you know, coming from a design background, that was not up to me on the AV side. It was pretty much a telecom job, you know, and then basically all you got was just a little funky kind of phone in the middle there. Or a lot of times you just got a handset with a speakerphone. 
that's not really collaborative. That's not really at the heart of what you guys did. And what you did with some of your products early on was not only recognize the IP side coming, but you integrated your audio and your microphone technology into the space to give a more well-rounded conversation or a more well-rounded product. Am I, am I off base? You're, you're right on the money. Uh, so we've uh, got into the, the area of, of video sound bars uh, for that huddle space that have become so popular these days. Uh, we, you know, most of our devices are, are plug and play, uh, or many of them anyways. Yeah. So if you've got a, a, a high-end camera uh, and you're looking to improve that audio in that space, uh, our devices are are going to enhance that that collaboration, that communication to those on the far end, in addition to those in that huddle space. Are you a firm believer that if the audio sucks, the conference call is going to be kind of bad? A hundred percent. And you know, it's so funny. We we walk into a conference room and look and see how we're we're doing on the screen, seeing if we're if we've got any uh, cheese left on our chin from lunch or whatever. But really, the the key fact factor of the uh, of the conference is the audio. Yeah. You know, it's nice to be able to see, see everyone and, and, you know, get their gestures or, or uh, eye race or whatever, but really the key component is that audio. Okay. You had me stumped at some of your products. Now this is, I know with a back and forth conversation that we're going to have right now, but I know that we're going to open this up to the floor, but something stood out in your marketing material that had me kind of confused. First I read it. I thought, wow, these guys are in the HVAC business, but that is incorrect. You're in the HVAD business. Tell me a little bit about human voice activity detection. It's a mouthful, but I bet. Right. You- and it is a mouthful. Uh-huh. Um, and it's a feature that's built into all of our, our Yamaha products. Um, the human voice travels at a certain frequency and our mics are designed to pick up the audio at which that human voice travels. Uh, so it's, it's keeping down, it's suppressing sounds. It's, uh, your, your annoying, uh, associate at the end of the uh, conference table, uh, uh, tapping their toes or, or, uh, ruffling a bag of chips or whatever, whatever's taking place. Uh, the audio other than than the human voice is kept down where the human voice is really focused upon. Okay. So tell me, out of your opinion, if I'm I'm building a just a simple huddle space, I want good audio. What is your recommendation off the bat? What would you recommend in a I mean we're talking a you know a twelve by twelve square room with a no no nothing, not even a display. We're just talking what would you put in a room twelve by twelve and I'll add a little level of complexity to you. I'll make it an all glass conference room. What would ah, you put there? <laughs> there you go. Well, my, my, my first question is how many people uh, will be sitting in that conference space typically? And when I know that, then I can, I can you know, offer a proper suggestion for that. So a, a typical huddle space, maybe four or six people tops. Um, we have a brand new product just started shipping in December called the YVC 330. Uh, we're really excited about this product. Um, it has a um, it has a new technology that will work within that huddle space, uh, but it will also work in an open space environment. Uh, the technology is called SoundCap. Mm-hmm. So that SoundCap again for that for that open space that we see so um, so often these days, in addition to the huddle space. Uh, allows the device to be used in those open collaboration spaces, uh, capturing nearby conversation uh, from approximately about a meter, uh, give or take. Uh, so it eliminates background noise outside of that sound cap. So if you're if you're using in a huddle space, that sound cap is not necessarily something you're going to be using. But if you're using in that open space collaboration area, that's where you might find noises outside of, of your conference that you're going to try, to try to keep to a minimum. That's when you hit the sound cap buttons on the device itself. So the YC300 is going to take place of, the, of, of a product that I know and use a lot, which is the YC200. Is that going to take its place or is that going to live above it as the next level up? Where does it fit in your portfolio so the 200 is more of a personal device you know one to three people one to four people Mm -hmm. uh the yvc 330 is a device uh for that huddle space you know up to as many as six people uh it has a a a big rich uh, yamaha quality speaker 
and a, a mic in each corner. It's a triangular shaped uh, device. Uh, there's three mics in there. Um, so really for a group of six people-ish in that huddle space. Um, taking it out of that huddle space for that open space environment, um, you know, that's, that's where that sound cap technology comes into play. Awesome. Sounds good. So now we have the 200 for the personal, the 330 for kind of the, the optimal, you know, or the, of the huddle space that we see, I guess, 90% of, of most rooms are, which is simple, you know, four to six, possibly eight around the table, if you get that. So that's where that lives. Tell me about the 1000. Now that goes to a whole nother level or where are we at with that? Yeah, so uh, the YBC 1000, that is, that is my personal uh, favorite device we offer. You can't um, have a favorite. That's uh, like that, picking- is, that is my favorite, without a doubt. Uh, <laughs> All it's right. a big, big, powerful speaker box. Uh, right. Comes with one mic. Uh, the mic po- it's a mic pod, and there are three uh, mics within that mic pod. Mm-hmm. So uh, also can be scaled. Uh, so the device, you daisy chain the mics, uh, can support as many as five total mics. They're on 15 foot cords, so you can cover a great deal of area with, with a full complement of mics. Sounds good. Um, uh, scalable, you can add uh, wireless mics to it. Our HD single and dual can be added to that uh, speaker box. So if someone's presenting, they've got a uh, clip on a uh, wearable mic and they can go around, walk around the room as I, as I like to do and, and present in that fashion. Uh, you can also add uh, an amplifier and speakers or powered speakers to it if you need some more audio output. Uh, and the, the, you know, one, of, one of the most important uh, features of this device or, or uh, things of note is that it has just become Zoom certified. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Uh, uh, that Zoom certification uh, really allows us to play in an area where uh, the client insists upon the need to adhere to that Zoom certification standards. And we have a couple of devices that, that do adhere to those strict standards. Sounds great. Good to hear about the Zoom partnership. Obviously, we've talked about this uh, outside of town halls and stuff like that. For the people that are listening and, 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 and being a part of this town hall, uh, Yamaha does have a, uh, a host of products that are Zoom certified. Uh, they also play nice with the other uh, soft codecs that are out there. So if that was a question, I will now encourage you guys to fire away with some questions because we've reached the point of the town hall where you are now literally in the hot seat, Mark, uh, mm-hmm. where now the questions will come in uh, from all angles. And I hope you're ready. If it's over the top engineering, you, we will allow you to refer to your engineers and at some point get back to the people. Very good. Uh, but outside of that, anything is open for discussion right now. And I do ready, I already got messaged with a question. If you're ready for it, are you ready, sir? I'll do the best I can. Okay. Do you prefer pizza or burgers on front? No, I'm kidding. See, I'm just, I'm just testing, just testing you. All right. First question that we have, uh, you guys purchased Revo Labs a few years ago. Now you've incorporated technology into your product, uh, obviously, uh, with some, you know, microphones and stuff like that. What is, uh, I guess the question is, will Yamaha specifically stay in the wireless mic conferencing business? Or uh, is there plans for that to somehow change? Where, where are you at with the wireless mic business? So um, we firmly believe the closer you get a mic to someone's kisser, the better you're going to pick up their audio. Mm-hmm. So we, we will be staying in the wireless mic business. Um, I would urge you to come by our booth at Infocom uh, to get a look at uh, some of our latest and greatest. And we've got some really exciting new products on the table that uh, I am unable to speak about right now, but um, visiting the booth at Infocom will get you a uh, a peek at some of those exciting new products. Well, you can tell me it's only us two. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, that that, uh, would get me in hot water. (laughs) Uh, Infocom, booth booth C107020. Thank God I asked. For the we got the booth information. We're you are ready for this one. You got uh, it. I gotta, I gotta come at you with a with a, with a much harder question. Um, you guys are gonna be no, this is not a much harder question. I'm this is a softball. Since you brought up Infocom, your next big show is ISE, correct? 
of that is true. So if uh, I have anybody on, on, the, on the hook here who is going to ISC, where can they find you at ISC? Yes, so our senior technical director, Holger Stoltz, uh, who does a lot of these webinars or a lot of our webinars, he'll be at the booth. Uh, it's 3C95. Awesome. He'll be and there uh, uh, answering and, and chatting with everyone. So he's the guy that we really want to ask the hard, hard uh, Yamaha questions to. Please, he, he's outstanding. He's he's really okay. terrific. So he's the guy. All right, cool. Um, so you will be at both ISC and NFLCom. Big presence at ISC for you guys. Obviously, you guys are probably going to be doing some trainings and uh, you, all your products that you mentioned here today. Uh, another sure. question that I got sent my way. Um, there are people that want that. There's somebody here that's asking. Tell me about the ESB. 1080 Enterprise soundbar. Now, it's a soundbar, but it's not a UC device. Uh, so it is. It is a soundbar, and it's bit built and based off Yamaha's uh, one of Yamaha's consumer products. Uh, but it was truly optimized for conferencing. Uh, no camera. A, uh, no camera. No. That's so, what I meant by UC. <laughs> Awesome. So you guys, on top of obviously your integrated soundbar that you guys have, you also have this ESB 1080. Self, you know, just a good sounding soundbar. That's not something I would have expected. Terrific wow. sounding soundbar. Oh, I would imagine it sounds great, but just a soundbar. Everybody's trying to pack everything into everything. What, where is the thought process behind that? Because that sounds really good because one of the problems that, you know, everybody can go out and get a camera. I have a hundred different cameras here. I got some that I really, 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 you know, do well in a huddle space environment, but you're hundred percent right with this sound bar. And until this question popped up, I didn't realize, you know, how are you going to put sound in a room neatly, cleanly? And I don't run across many sound bars. So kudos to you guys for, for identifying that as an issue. And well, out there. so tell me more about it. So, so the neat thing is that that Yamaha listened. You know, we've been asked, and and going back to my initial days with with the company, for a, a sound bar for the enterprise or for education, and I you know ran it up the flagpole a million times, and I'm, I'm sure I didn't. I wasn't the only one, uh, um, you know, stressing the importance of of a sound bar. But but we'd we'd all been asked, and. Uh, uh, Yamaha broke down one of their consumer products, uh, rebuilt it, optimized it for the enterprise, uh, has three different modes depending on uh, the area it's deployed in. Um, and uh, it's really taken off for us. We're really excited, especially uh, in the education area. So, so keep your eyes open uh, for opportunities in education. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I know from, from my own personal experience, getting a sound bar onto the wall is usually key just to eliminate the clutter on top of the, uh, of the wall, uh, on top of, uh, excuse me, not of the wall, but of the tables and stuff like that. So having that source is great. And it's also from my limited knowledge of, of audio, knowing or placing the sound where the, where the image is, 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 is better. It's directional. Sure. Sounds better. Awesome. Is there a particular size room that it's optimized for or specific is, are you going to call this your boardroom solution or is this like an, it can work in any space as well and you have the flexibility to make those adjustments? So there is the flexibility. Um, it can be used in an open area, uh, uh, hotel mode is what we call it. So if you walk in to a, uh, to a building and they've got a monitor on the wall, uh, you can use the or employ the hotel mode where it's going to broadcast properly in a big, large space. Uh, there's also a conference mode, which you uh, can set up in, in a, a small to medium sized conference room. Uh, and then there's just the standard mode operating. So uh, you can really in, in almost any environment and, and truly enhance the audio in that conference. Awesome. That's, that's a great uh, option. I know for us as, as Theron, we carry a hundred different uh, types of products, but specifically on the USB side, uh, you know, our PTZ optics cameras, our Logitech cameras, our Aver cameras, they all can pair up with that in a conference room space. But like you said, you sometimes just need audio in a place that's not even a conference room in a lobby or something for your digital signage. That's great to know that you guys have a product that kind of steps outside that realm that can do a little bit of both. Sure. Um, is there uh, any questions coming from, I don't see them right here, but I do have a question coming in from one of our guys here. Um, 
will, <laughs> all right, tell me what you can tell me. Will Yamaha be launching new products this year? We will be. Uh, unfortunately, I, I just don't have the luxury to share. But as I mentioned, uh, Infocom, we will have uh, some of those exciting new products uh, on display. How will, you know, how, well, I know how to get a hold of you. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I can. But how will we know? Uh, how can the people that are on this call find out more information about products that you're launching? Is there, do they have to stay tuned to your website? Well, websites, also uh, all of the social uh, platforms, uh, mm -hmm. but we do have uh, regional sales managers across the, across the country. Okay. So um, uh, reach out to those. We've got uh, really outstanding people. In addition, we've got some uh, really terrific field sales engineers that work with those RSMs to provide uh, solutions and assistance, direction and guidance when, uh, whenever needed. Uh, really a terrific uh, group of people. Kind of a shame. I should have had a. I should have had you brought this list of where you're going to be next show so people can actually see it. You know, us AV nerds, uh, we kind of have to see it, touch it, hear it to believe things. Right. And, you know, going to these trade shows where you guys are at is a great way to to experience that. Um, so. ISE, Infocom's on schedule. You may have some opportunities in between where there's some other local trade shows. Uh, if you guys are interested, for the people that are listening, that are interested in hearing where they're going to be, let me know. I'll get a hold of uh, Mark, and Mark can find from his regional folks where these trade shows are so you can catch up with Yamaha at a local uh, event uh, where they're showing off their products and maybe doing some demos and stuff like that. Um, looking here, I did get another message pop up. Uh, that one I did. That one I did. I, we talked about that one. Wow, I got a someone, internal question. Someone just Go asked ahead. about the soundbar. What's that? Someone just asked about the uh, the soundbar, the model number. That is ESB, Edward Sam uh, Bobby, uh, dash 1080, ESB 1080, Enterprise Soundbar 1080. Awesome. And there it is, the ESB 1080. Perfect. We got that information set out. Well, sir, we are coming up on that half hour mark, and that is um, that is going to be our, our thing. We don't want to take up too much time every time. You answered a lot of questions, some of the stuff that made you maybe even feel a little uncomfortable answering, and I tried to pull it out of him, people, but he did not want to reveal anything that would get him in trouble. So what we're going to do is now we're going to bring up our Amazon gift card uh, uh, giveaway that we do at all of our town halls. Uh, this will continue on for 2020. Uh, producer Mr. Mark Decker is in the background. Mark, uh, you guys can put the names through the wheel -o. and There it is. The winner, uh, the winner of the $50 gift card is Mr. Uh, Tim Duncan of TSI Global. Tim, if you are on the call or if you're not, uh, you were on the call, we can go ahead and get that information to you. Mark, uh, Mr. Mispelli, because I have two marks on the call here. Thank you, sir, for uh, attending uh, our call and uh, you know letting us know about some of your wonderful products, some that are in the conference world, and giving us a little scoop in on the ESB product, which just can handle a lot of other different things. So it's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Um, while I have everybody uh, on the call, I'd just like to thank everybody for attending today's town hall. Uh, next month, uh, our town hall will be on February 27th. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel for those old enough to understand that reference. If not, hit me up and I'll tell you about Batman and the old uh, Batman show. Oh my God. And I got phones going off and all this sort of jazz. Well, thank you. Uh, next month's town hall will be with Barco. Uh, Barco is expecting great things in 2020. As you can see by the graphic, uh, they are uh, talking about Click share, and we were going to be going into some of the click share stuff. They have some big announcements coming, and they just announced a 500 nit Unicy panel uh, as well. So a lot of uh, uh, cool things coming their way. Uh, back to uh, this call. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Mark, thank you for being a part of this. I look forward to bringing you back on and uh, and and getting some of the details that we couldn't speak of today. Very good, Chris. Thanks so much. I really appreciate uh, you having me on and I appreciate everyone who's in attendance. It sounds great. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Decker, for your production work on this. And thank you, everybody, for joining uh, on, the, on the, this month's town hall. I'll see everybody next month, February 27th. 
when we have Barco on the call. Thank you and have a great day.